if i were to uh, ask you a, a question relating to the knowledge systems that we had in ancient right. india uh, right. what were the different kinds of uh, indigenous indic epistemology that we can probably come to acquaint ourselves with right 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 so so you you you're right to first go when we talk about knowledge systems we have to show there's a tradition of knowledge systems in india and what are those knowledge systems and what are the methodologies for 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 knowledge and epistemology so if if we if we look at some of the traditional accounts it says that all knowledge comes from the shruti and the smriti traditions the shruti includes uh, things like the vedas we know that the brahmanas the upanishads the aranyakas all of these things are the shruti tradition and there is a deep philosophical knowledge and epistemology in all of these things on the other side if you go to the uh, 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 smriti tradition there also we are seeing enormous bodies of knowledge we are seeing things like for example the the puranas the itihasas the the kavyas the nibandhas we're seeing the vedangas six vedangas so many uh, items of knowledge in india are uh, lumped over here it is such that anybody who wanted to find intellectual fulfillment could easily do so within the framework of knowledge systems that existed in india there was no conflict between philosophy and uh, knowledge systems as opposed to the today's western world where the minute we talk about science it is that conflict with the dominant religion abrahamic religions because there is a creation model pushed over there and here there's a different kind of model pushed over here in science so so we find that their systems do not reconcile but in the indian tradition there is no such dichotomy it's always studied intertwined it is part of the basis of looking at the world and the way you look at the world is what we call pramanas and other other things so we had the shat darshanas darshanas are the ones which allow us to see the world in a certain way into reality in the question the nature of reality so in this epistemology we have had a whole lot of things things like uh, nyaya things like yoga things like samkhya vaisheshika uh purva mimamsa uttara mimamsa so all these schools of darshanas existed which went into enquiry into the nature of reality what is the nature of reality some of the rishis who uh, propounded these ideas they came about with great uh, one line statements like a truth exists whether we human beings know it or not i mean imagine what an amazing statement it is that truth is beyond your understanding truth is there whether you human beings know it or not truth exists and things like vaisheshika which worked on perception and inference that you see it you can measure it and you can infer what is the behavior or the working of the entity so these are deeply scientific ways of doing it and others which worked on reflection consideration and uh, so on so even today i keep saying as a scientist i do the same things whenever i'm confronted with a new problem what do i do i first want to study that problem what is that problem all about i go to the library i read some journals i see what others have said about it i enumerate all the facts that are known about this problem what do people know about this problem enumerate all of them then i go through a process of deep consideration reflection discussion with colleagues and after after a lot of thinking and writing and i write out the models and i come up with a, a theory of what this is all about so even today we can see our knowledge systems are based on much on what the rishis have already told us it is a similar kind of knowledge system and then pramanas itself the means to knowledge that also laid out how knowledge should be uh, accepted because not everything is knowledge just because you see something doesn't make it knowledge so there were debates on what is knowledge and what is not for example the charvakas who said perception alone only if we can perceive it it is real i will reject everything else vedas everything is rejected only and buddhism it said perception and inference alone only if you can perceive it and infer from it like vaisheshika then i that is real then others they talked about experience they talked about negative proof for example uh, even the statement that uh, in this room there is no jar of water so that's a negative proof i cannot see a jar of water so i can't perceive it but that non negativeness is also a true statement things of that nature so so the philosophical discussions into what is uh, the nature of uh, truth 
was deeply developed in India by various rishis, acharyas, gurus, and so on, and to come to us by various mechanisms. So with this epistemology, we have a whole lot of knowledge developed in the Vedangas, whether you're talking about medicine, mathematics, astronomy, law, whether you're talking about uh, artisan knowledge systems, everything is an outgrowth of this epistemology that we see. So we have seen, for example, you asked, what are the knowledge systems? After we talk about epistemology, the next thing we see is what are the works? What are the works that have come out? In addition to all these rishis' works that talk about darshanas and philosophical discussions in Upanishads and uh, other, other works, we are now seeing, for example, medicine. If you take a look at Shushita Samhita, if you look at Charaka Samhita, Vagbata's works, and uh, so many other people's works, we know medicine was enormously developed in India. In fact, uh, if, if you, if you, if you uh, take a look, there are philosophers who have said that it is the Samkhya tradition that uh, led to much of these knowledge systems. In addition to the uh, fact that, uh, sorry, uh, in addition to the fact that logical statements and Nyaya, Samkhya, they said that it is because of medicine. Medicine was a killer application. If you want to find out whether somebody has got a certain condition, you go through some logical questions. Could it be this? Could it be that? Did this cause that? Did that cause this? This kind of a logical inquiry, the killer application was medicine. It is because of that that many of these things came in Ayurveda and, and other works. So medicine is uh, one, one, one big area with Ayurveda and the works that we have. Mathematics. Mathematics is an enormous field, well developed in India for the longest time we see this developed in India for a number of reasons. The reasons we see in the works of perhaps uh, 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 unlikely works of uh, Angus Madison or Will Durant or Utsa Patnaik, who in recent times said that India was a very rich society going back to the ancient past. And if you think of commerce and trade, one has got to think about economics, one has got to think about mathematics. If a society was not adept at mathematics, algebra, positioning of economic uh, problems in algebra form and solving these things, then you're not going to succeed in the business world. Forget it, everybody's going to cheat you. <laughs> So the killer application was obviously commerce. That is a rich society that traded with everybody. And we are seeing evidence of this again and again. I've seen it in various places. So mathematics, we see the uh, tradition. We can go all the way back to Bodhayana, Sulba Sutras, or even earlier, there is uh, evidence of uh, several, several, several issues that you find archaeological evidence, as well as uh, scriptural evidence, manuscript evidence, Bakshali manuscript, we are seeing that, and, and so on. So algebra, geometry, uh, uh, trigonometry, uh, many of these things, including all the way up to calculus, we know has been developed in India. If you go from that to astronomy, astronomy was super developed in India. In the old days, you can think that there's no television or other things to keep people occupied. So after having a dinner in the evening, the best thing you could do was in the hot Indian summer nights, you'd come out, put your cart and lie down outside and see the stars over your head. <laughs> that was an entertainment. And after some time, it, there's so much familiarity with the skies. It's like old friends, right? So they observed certain stars come at certain times in the night and uh, certain times in the year, yearly cycle. So ancient Indians had observed the Uttrayana phenomenon, the Dakshinayana phenomenon, where the sun goes to the northernmost point and goes to the southernmost point, and observed that they could estimate the solar year on the basis of this. They could estimate it exactly at 365.24 days. They had estimated also the uh, so-called sidereal month and the synodic month. These were lunar cycles where the moon comes back to the same background of stars or nakshatras. That is a sidereal month or the moon comes back to the same phase from new moon to new moon or full moon to full moon. That's a synodic month. And the Indians had discovered these things. They had, they, they had proposed the nakshatra model, nakshatra model, the division of the sky ecliptic into 27 segments, 13 and one third degrees each. And they identified principal brightest stars in each of the segments, they gave the na names of the wives of the moons for the nakshatras. And using that, they were able to mark the passage of time. So given, all these developments, we are seeing that uh, uh, astronomy gave uh, rise to enormous intellectual uh, uh, discoveries. People wanted to reconcile the lunar cycles along with the solar cycles. And in doing so, they developed the yoga model, several yoga models were developed. And 
by the time we come to Aryabhata and much before him also actually, we had Siddhantic astronomy. Siddhantic astronomy means uh, mathematical astronomy. That tradition was also very, very well developed as we can see going all the way to Kerala School of Mathematics. We are seeing a, a continuous unbroken tradition in the knowledge systems of India. So I've, I've only pointed out a few, but there is a great evidence, whichever field you take the Vyanshi, we can show that there are some ancient works that address this knowledge system. That is the bottom line. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.